Hello and welcome to this my first video about string algorithms. Today I want to discuss the theory behind suffix trees and in the following videos we will begin to describe methods of constructing and using these. When talking about suffix trees we need to get some basic terminology in place first. Trees. This is one of our data structures for storing and retrieval of strings. What we see from this is that shared prefixes implies shared initial paths. So if we have AB, that shares the prefix with ABC. Then we take the same initial path in AB of both strings. String must have a unique root to leave path. Therefore each suffix must end with a special character. In these examples I will use the dollar sign. Now, given a query string y from 1 to m, we can determine if y equals one of the input strings or a prefix in order m time. In terms of space complexity, in this general case with n input strings, we of course want to minimize the space consumption of having to store this tree. Using what is called compacted trees, which is to eliminate all internal nodes of degree 2, for n input strings our tree has n plus 1 leaves and at most n internal nodes. In this example this would be space of order n. I'm not going to go into details about labels. Just know that they can be represented in constant space, like in this example AB would be 1, 1, 2, meaning start index and the two child nodes. A suffix tree named t of x of some string x from 1 to n is a compacted tree of all the suffixes of x of i to n for i equals 1 up to n plus 1, including the empty string. This will take order n space to store this tree. This can be proved very simple, which I will show here. We know that t of s has at most n leaves. At most, each of these internal nodes will branch at most n minus 1 internal nodes. This will give us at most 2n minus 1 internal nodes. And this will create at most 2n minus 2 edges. We state that a node requires constant space. Each label on our edge is a substring of our s, so we can store this as a pair of pointers into our string s. I hope you agree with me that this will give us order n space. So, how do we construct this tree? So what we do in the naive case is that we insert each suffix one by one. This will take us order n squared. Can we do any better? Well, actually, in 1973, Weiner showed that the suffix tree can be constructed in time order n. Two algorithms used for constructing the suffix tree, McRae in 1976 and Ukunen in 1993, which highly simplify the algorithm behind Weiner's theories. So what are the applications of this? Why do we actually need to construct these suffix trees? Well, one example could be exact matching. So given a string x and a pattern y, report where y occurs in x. So we say that if y occurs in x at position i, then y is a prefix of suffix i of x. Another example could be to find repeats in a string. So we want to find recurrences of a substring r which consists of two substrings, s from i1 to j1 and another s from i2 to j2. Of course, these two must be equal to each other. The idea of finding exact repeats would be to find all pairs of repeated substrings in our string s in linear time. So how do we do this? Well, consider the string s and its suffix tree t of s. Repeated substrings of s correspond to what we call internal locations in t of s. 
The leaf numbers tells us positions of where substrings occur. So, say we have this suffix tree and we want to find all pairs of repeated substrings of the string AT. So we follow the edge corresponding to the letter A and we end at the middle of the edge. Thereafter we follow the T and end at a node, where we can report the leaf numbers of the children being 2 and 4. So the string A T has an exact match repeat on position 2, 4. The time complexity of this will then be calculated as order n plus z, where z is the size of the output, meaning the number of locations we have repeats. Now we'll take a look at what's called the longest common substring. The longest common substring of x 1 up to n and y 1 up to m is the longest string z, which occurs in both x and y. How does this rely on suffix trees as we just described? So the idea is to build a compacted tree of all suffixes of x and y, such that each suffix of x and y corresponds to a unique root to leaf path. So this is an example where we just expand our suffix tree to implement all the suffixes of y. What you need to observe about this is that z is the path label of the deepest node with suffix from both x and y as leaves in its subtree and the time complexity will now be order n plus m. What we have constructed here is named the generalized suffix tree. So a generalized suffix tree is a suffix tree for a set of strings. When constructing this we need to have a unique terminator string for each string to ensure that no suffix is a substring of another. So what we guarantee is that each suffix is represented by a unique leaf node. Now we must argue that we get the same branching structure. So we build up three general cases that we must argue is unique. Case 1. We have some string from 1 to n and another from 1 to m. So in this case, a suffix shared in i and j positions of our first string. We must ensure that we have a unique leaf node. So in this case, we would have a branching ending with i and j leaf nodes from string 2. So the blue branches is the suffix from 1 to j and from 1 to i. Case 2 is somewhat like case 1. Instead, it's now a prefix that is shared in our second string. So this will generate the prefix followed by a branch of the two suffixes in string 2. In terms of string 1, this is no, has no effect on how the branch will look. Case 3 is where we have a prefix contained in both string 1 and in string 2. So it's clear that that would give us the prefix with a branching node of unto the two suffix in both. Now that we have shown that we are able to construct this generalized suffix tree, we need to look at the complexities of this construction. So we start off by looking at the space consumption. What we already know is that constructing tfx requires order n space where n is the length of our input string x. But how much space does it consume in practice? Well, to realize this, we have to know how we represent our suffix tree. The standard approach is to store nodes as records with child and sibling pointers. An edge label i, j is stored at node below the edge. This will give us 32n bytes in the worst case. So 2n times 2 integers plus 2 pointers. I hope you agree with me on this. To reduce this cost, we need some ideas for a more efficient way of representing this. So what we do is to say that we do not represent leaves explicitly. Instead, we would just set a leaf bit. We avoid sibling pointers by storing all children of the same node in a row. And we do not represent the right pointer of an edge label. 
instead we just lose a last child bit. In practice this would give us somewhere between 10 and 40 bytes per letter in X. Now you might wonder, is this really a problem? Well it depends on our N. If the length of our input is about 500 million, then yes it would. What we could try to do is improve upon the alphabet size. So how much time does it actually take to find the proper edge out from a node when searching in a suffix tree? The answer is that it would take time proportional to the out degree of the node less than or equal to the length of our alphabet. So search time in practice is order length of the alphabet times length of our search string. If the size of our alphabet is large, this really matters. So to reduce this, we need some ideas of how to optimize upon this. The first idea is to organize children in a search tree, reducing the search time from size of our alphabet to order log length of A. This will of course require an ordered alphabet. Another idea is to organize children in a vector of size equal to the size of our alphabet, indexing by letters. This will actually reduce the search time from length of A to constant time, though it would require a finite alphabet. The third idea is to use some other dictionary for mapping letters to children. So you see, the alphabet size matters in practice. Thank you for watching this video about suffix trees in my series about string algorithms. If you have any questions about this video or suggestion for future material, please go write a comment or send me an email which will be posted in the video description.